Today we are here in the SIP warehouse because we need a little space. Because this video series is all about explaining the differences between the individual scooter models. We would like to start with showing you the individual categories. That means modern Vespa, small frame, large frame, wide frame, and here in the back, Lambretta. Why do the scooters stand in this particular order? We have put the Vespas in a chronological order. First were the wide frame models, then came the large frame models, and a little later the small frame models were released. Nowadays you can only buy the modern Vespa. We have two of them right here and the Lambretta models, but we treat them separately. These models that you can see here fit roughly in the vintage area of the large frame. Okay, let's start. First, I would like to show you the Vespa wide frame models, because the whole Vespa story started with these models. This Vespa right here looks essentially very, very similar to the very first Vespa models. Basically, you can say that you can recognize the Vespa wide frame by its wide footrest down here. That's why it's called wide. And also this hatch. Early models had the carburetor in there. On the other hand, the scooter back here, the Vespa T4. The footrest here is much smaller than at the GS150. What else is interesting with the Vespa wide frame? You can see that a lot of development has already taken place. The lamp has moved from the bottom to the top. At the beginning there were 8 inch wheels. At the very end there were 10 inch wheels, like the GS. These models are just very old, which also means that the technology was more vulnerable, less friendly in everyday use than the later models, and today they are of course very expensive. Now let's take a look at the following generation, the Vespa large frame. Even though both the wide frame and the large frame got produced at the same time for some years, they look quite similar and for an unexperienced person it's hard to see the difference. But the simplest distinguishing feature is of course the narrower frame here in this area, which is also the quickest way to recognize it. There is also no hatch here, and this side panel has no bulge here as well. That's actually the quickest way to tell. The technology has also changed a lot. Not only the construction of the frame, but also the construction of the engine is completely different, and the setup of the engine as well. And the interesting thing about this technology is that its basic concept was the same for years to come. So, most of the parts of the PX, and also here in the early large frame models, are compatible or are based on a very similar principle. The Vespa large frame was built up to 200cc, which makes it relatively powerful and suitable for everyday use. In general, one can also say that the last forms of the large frame were a bit more comfortable. At the very end, there was even a disc brake. All this has increased the suitability for everyday use quite a bit. Early models are of course relatively expensive these days. The PX is quite affordable, so for someone who wants to gain first experience, who wants to learn a bit about engineering, such a PX is very interesting. Now let's take a look at the Vespa small frame. In the early to mid-1960s, Piaggio thought they wanted to bring a more compact model series onto the market that starts at 50cc up to 125cc, but which also has a smaller frame than the previous Vespas. And therefore, the Vespa small frame was created. The best distinguishing features of a Vespa small frame are basically the side panels, which are fixed, so you cannot remove them. There is such a hatch here on the other side. There is also a small side hatch, a motor hatch, but the base side hood is firmly attached to the scooter. 
as you can see from the front, earlier Vespa small frames are relatively difficult to distinguish from earlier Vespa large frames, but the technology makes the difference. The engine is also built a little differently. The cylinder is no longer horizontal, but is slightly inclined upwards. This model series was also produced for a long time. Here you can see the last model of this series, that is the PKXL2. A lot of plastic parts are mounted in here. A large speedometer and optically it has changed quite a bit. Not every Vespa fan enjoys that anymore. But especially this scooter here is interesting because it is one of the last gear switch Vespas ever built in Pontedera. After that, the production was relocated. Now we come to the today of scooter construction, to the modern Vespa. After the last PX and PK models, the mother company Piaggio stopped producing Vespas for a while. They continued to produce scooters, but automatic scooters, not under the Vespa brand. Only after a few years they brought scooters with a self-supporting steel body onto the market, under the Vespa brand, and that is what we call modern Vespa today. You can recognize them very easily, so just in comparison to the older Vespas. They are equipped with an automatic four-stroke engine and are available up to 300cc. I think they have a very classic design and above all, this construction feature, the original self-supporting steel body. I think that this is a very nice implementation of the Vespa concept into the modern times. And with that, we say goodbye to the Vespas in terms of category and move to the Lambrettas, my favorite category. In the 1950s and 60s, there was a really big competitor to the Vespa in Italy, and that was the Lambretta scooter. These are two examples of Lambretta scooters. Like the Vespa, there were very early models. Then later, there was small frame and large frame. We would like to limit ourselves to the Lambretta large frame models. These are two examples. What is quite characteristic of the Lambretta scooters is that they don't have a self-supporting frame like the Vespas, but they have a central tubular frame and the engine is not attached to the side of the rear wheel, but it is located in front of the rear wheel and is running with the help of a chain inside the housing, connected to the rear wheel. Lambretta has always been a very innovative brand. For example, they were the first to install a standard disc brake on a two-wheeler. Okay, that was quite a very superficial representation of the individual categories. What we plan to do next is that we would like to introduce you to all of these scooter categories in detail, where you can get more information about the individual models and the technology. If you're interested and you would like to see it, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell. Until next time, bye.